From the submission that made him a star, to his growing reputation as a very well-rounded threat, here's why very few fighters are jumping at the opportunity to take on Bryce Mitchell. So, what's there to know about this eye-catching featherweight prospect? Well, he was born and raised in Arkansas, and if you ask him, he'd tell you he is a country boy through and through. During his youth, he played a number of sports, including basketball. However, when wrestling took hold, it never let go. And there was nothing too crazy or outlandish about his earliest years. There was nothing that would indicate what was about to follow. Just a hardworking kind who had his eyes fixed on the number one prize in MMA. I keep getting better every fight, and uh, every fight there's something else that I feel like I did wrong and I want to fix it, and uh, I'm just going to keep trying to improve myself as much as I can and heal my body right now because I got some healing to do. To get his hand raised in a UFC championship bout and take home that coveted gold belt. But many prospects make their debut in the UFC every year. So what are the steps in evaluating the best one? What can you do to make those calls? Well, you've got to look at their core skill set. What do they bring to the table? And obviously, your first question after that is how they have been able to make it work, and more importantly, against who. You'd look at that level of competition and how it grew. You know, as, as Mitchell forces Phillips to the cage, he's trying to put this fight where, it's, where, where he's most... Relative to the growth of the fighter himself, then you'd look at how they handle adversity, how they adapt to it. And then there's the X factors, the special thing that makes the great ones truly great. Now look, it might be a little early to call Bryce Mitchell great, but if we can see it, you bet his opponents can too. And even after losing to Ilya Toparia, there's a reason why Mitchell is one of the most avoided men in the 145 pound division. But what is the case? Just clamps down on this head and arm choke and tremendous pressure. Well, a look over Bryce's pre-UFC career will show you several things. Firstly, his run as a pro followed a pretty healthy trajectory. In his first six fights, he fought a suitable level of competition. Guys who weren't exactly going to set his world on fire, but experienced fighters nonetheless. All of them, bar one, were more experienced than him. He submitted every single one of them. Fights seven and eight showcased a step up in competition, where he took on prospects like himself. Maybe not to quite the same level as him, but solid opposition. He beat them both submitting the first and going the full 15 with the other. He then had a stint on The Ultimate Fighter, where he tasted defeat for the first time. In fact, he lost by way of submission to Brad Katona. For some fighters, that would be the end of the story. But for Bryce, the UFC had seen enough to offer him a shot in the promotion. And in his first two octagon appearances, he managed to get two and zero, proving that, at the very least, he belonged in the top flight. But it was his third fight in the UFC that's where everything changed. Mitchell put his stellar grappling on display, pulling off the incredible rare twister submission, only the second in UFC history. All of a sudden, the kid was a star, and nobody wanted to fight him. With 2019 submission of the year under his belt, Mitchell went 2-0 in 2020. And nearly a year and a half out, Bryce then returned in 2022 and totally dominated Edson Barboza. He put a pace on the legendary Brazilian that made many call him an American answer to Khabib. And if you thought these featherweights weren't queuing up to fight him before, his reputation as a smothering presence only grew from there. And sure, he lost his most recent fight against Ilya Toporia, an A-tier prospect in his own right. But let's not forget just how much success Mitchell was having until the hard hands of Ilya caught him. Bryce got finished by way of submission after getting dropped. But Toporia is an amazing fighter, so it's not like Bryce's stock took too much of a hit. Mitchell's a total killer. He's an unorthodox fighter who has the ability to truly wear down his foes. I let him roll me. Uh, there was one time I let him roll me at the end because I was going for a sub with the minute left, but other than that, his escapes, he escaped, and uh, I don't want him escaping when I get him down. His knowledge of intricate wrestling and submission techniques is coupled with an ever-improving striking game. In fact, given just how many improvements we have seen in his stand-up, it's not out of the question to expect Mitchell's progress as a well-rounded fighter. Phillips immediately. And now Brandon Phillips, he's in Bryce, he's in Mitchell. To reach another level entirely before he's 30, and that's the scary thing. The dude is already quite experienced. He's a veteran of 16 career bouts, seven of them in the UFC. I love y'all to death. For 10 years, y'all have had my back, and I ain't done a damn thing for y'all.
and he already has a very well-defined fighting system in place. And to make matters worse for his rivals, he's only 28 years old. There's a lot of room to improve there, folks. You could make the argument that he needs to sharpen up his striking, because while it is good and still a work in progress, to be successful against the Holloways, the Rodriguez's, and the Volkanovskis of the division, you got to have plan B, C, and D on hand. But one thing is for certain, Mitchell has a personality to him, and if you can keep things moving in the right direction in the cage, he'll no doubt have himself an audience by the time he reaches the top of the mountain. See, the thing about Bryce Mitchell is that he's a total character. He's probably even quite off-putting to a certain portion of the fan base. But those who love him, love him. This guy is a total nut for conspiracies. He's a flat earther, a hard-talking, web-surfing cattle farmer in his spare time. And he's gotten himself in some hot water with comments he has made in the past. I mean, the man still hasn't accepted that the earth is round. But yeah, he's definitely a unique presence within the sport. And he is not afraid to speak his mind on any topics. He doesn't care in the slightest, which is admirable to some degree. The dude's name is Thug Nasty. Of course he's coming in mean. And all that attention, all the controversy Mitchell brings, there's a chance that it will cost him some opportunities in the future. In fact, it's beyond a chance at this point, it definitely will. But even some potential opponents might not want any of that smoke for reasons that go beyond fighting. Mitchell is a pot stirrer, and he's damn proud of it. He will do things that are detrimental to his UFC career in order to stand his ground. Remember that 18-month absence from the cage before he fought Edson Barbosa? Well, that came to pass because of Mitchell's whole take on the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll let you fill in the gaps on that one. But again, Bryce will find his audience no matter what he says. And coming up at UFC 288, he will have a major opportunity to make an even bigger name for himself. The Barbosa fight was at UFC 272, a reasonably big pay-per-view, headlined by Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal. But his loss to Toporia flew pretty comfortably under the radar. On the Magomed on Goliath versus Jan Blakovich's event. So this time, with Sterling and Cejudo at the top of the billing, and with the unbeaten Mazvar Evolev in front of him, this could be a real star-making performance. Evolev was not the original opponent for Mitchell, with Jonathan Pierce being the first choice. But after he was forced to pull out, we ended up getting an even better fight. Evolev is an absolute beast, and immensely physical fighter who, like Bryce, possesses the means to make his wins incredibly dominant wrestling displays. Coming up against Mitchell, who likes a similar our game plan, we could well see these two wrestlers cancel each other out, leaving us with a striking affair. But hopefully, these two bring us some high-level scrambling, some electric back-and-forth exchanges. There's a real opportunity for one of these guys to make a name for themselves at 145 pounds. We don't know exactly how long Alexander Volkanovsky is going to stick around at the top, especially with the allure of 155 pounds always there, and the rematch with Islam Makhachev beckoning. And if Yair Rodriguez can get the job done in their upcoming title unification bout, that's a stylistic matchup that both Mitchell and Evolev would no doubt prefer. This could well be a fight for the future of the division because alongside Ilya Toporia, there's likely a future featherweight king in this bracket. And these other contenders have every reason to be nervous. Very nervous indeed. Who knows? Maybe Bryce Mitchell could outgrow both of them. Even the man who just beat him in Toporia. From the viral moment that put him on the map, to his growing reputation as a uniquely abrasive personality, it's easy to see why so many fighters are unwilling to take on this featherweight prospect. 